Hello everyone, welcome back to Razer Aerospace and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, where I'm going to try out the newly released Latte Coware Latte 631. This was released to the marketplace as part of the Local Legends pack with City Update 2. And it is $15, regular price, though if you have the Deluxe or Premium Editions, you get it for $10. And it is a flying boat, which is a little bit inconvenient, uh, because we don't have a whole lot of... Uh, sea runways. In fact, the only one I could find in France right now, though it's, uh, I'm sure there are others, it's just really hard to use the map to find any of the water runways. Uh, the only one I found was, as it so happens, Latte Coer Airport, uh, which this wouldn't have flown out of. Otherwise, I was uh, resigned to me flying out of Gen Genoa instead. But we're going to do a lap here uh, around Bordeaux and then come back to Latte Coer Airport to see how I can land it. So I'll just talk more about inside the cockpit here. The Latte Coera 631 is a very large transatlantic flying boat. You can see our cabin is huge. Uh, the distance between me and the co-pilot is something special. <laughs> and uh, the view is uh, spectacular. In fact, the engines are right there, which is nice. Uh, if you see, see where the engines are, they're, they are really right out the window. So that's... Uh, fancy. It is a beautiful looking plane uh, of which 11 were built. That's not unusual for this kind of plane. Uh, the Boeing 314 Clipper had about the same number built and that was the famous Pan Am Clipper. And uh, unfortunately many of them met with disaster. Uh, four of them uh, were lost at ba I think basically all in the Atlantic. They all had some mechanical issue and everyone Perished, unfortunately. Not the best record for a local legend ever, but it was sort of a dangerous thing going across the Atlantic still. And But yeah, it, it had some issues engineering-wise. But still, a beautiful plane and the largest uh, flying boat until the Spruce Goose flew, but of course that only flew once. Uh, but we are going to see whether we can take off in the distance that we have available to us, given that it's so huge. It has many interesting features. Uh, so going back into the cockpit, uh, you'll note the GPS, don't worry, you can get rid of it. Uh, it, it there's a lot of uh, features on this clipboard, uh, colon dark start, uh, the national flag, uh, dock, anchor buoys, engine covers, and uh, you can refuel main ox and uh, fill oil tanks here. And then generator, APU on, cockpit lights, and then importantly hide or unhide avionics. And then the undercarriage, uh, which can only be activate on, ac activated on the ground with engines cut. Keep that in mind. And that can roll you to somewhere. And that's just in case you ground yourself, maybe. And then a tugboat. So I'm not going to try all these things. Uh, I'm just pointing them out as they are there. And we are going to just do uh, what I would regard as a normal flight. So we are at full throttle here. The sound... I mean, I suppose it must be realistic. Uh, right Cyclone is a fairly normal engine, but it's not as loud as I would have thought it would be. We're at 60 knots right now. The uh, speedometer is in kilometers per hour. We do our flaps down. There is only one flap setting. Landing is going to be harder though. 90 knots. I'm pulling up. And we're off at about 100 knots. Now let's see about clearing the trees, shall we? Once off the water, it accelerates pretty well. 120 knots right now. Okay, and the flaps over here, it's 0 or 17 degrees. That's it. Ooh. And then there's also the, what do they call them? Ballonets. Those are the floats. Uh, they don't operate using G for landing gear or anything like that. They sort of retract like that. I wonder why they had the doors, though. 
Because you could just sort of have them streamline and then leave it be. I don't know what why the doors would be necessary, necess uh, but maybe for the what you got actuators. And we are heading north to our first location. Unfortunately, uh, the map doesn't show what the locations are anymore. It is very hefty, so it has a good hefty feel to it. We're going at 156 knots right now. Well, I'm gonna throttle down a little bit to descend. I think about 150 knots is about what it can do. Which is not bad for a flying boat. It is very stylish. I think the first sight might be that landscape there. I mean, that's gotta be custom. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting formation here. Wonder what the townspeople down there think. <laughs> oh. Yep, yeah, no, this is definitely custom. I don't know what to call it, but this is site number one. Let's see, I've got an alternate map that might tell us. Nope, it doesn't seem to have this thing marked any words at all. So there are numerous cockpit views. Uh, this is of course control 1, control 2 is the center panel, control 3 is the co-pilot, control 4 is back here behind the pilot. I don't know if there's actually a seat here, but maybe just to get a different perspective. And then control 5 is back here with the navigator. Control 6, the radio. Control 7, engineer. Control 8. Uh, I don't know, more engineer? <laughs> Probably more engineer. They, they always need as many as possible. Control 9. And control 0. Okay, so yeah, all the custom views are occupied. Not many custom external views. I don't know if there are any further views of the cabin. I thought I saw one, but I don't know how to access it without just sort of moving the camera manually. Incidentally, it does come with 16 liveries, even though there were only 11 actual planes. I, I guess maybe they they got repainted along the way, I'm not sure. Looks like the cruise speed was 160 knots and then the maximum speed 213 knots, that's according to Wiki, so I'll take it over a grain of salt. And the range 3,259 nautical miles, which of course is transatlantic range. And yeah, the view with the engines as we're cruising along. It feels natural to fly it at fairly low altitudes. Well, I sure do hope people like flying boats, because we sure have a lot of them for flight sim. I wish we had some of the more sporty ones, like the small record breaker float planes. The crazy ones that had the airspeed record for a while, because there weren't any proper runways, so the land planes didn't have enough room to take off while having an enormous engine, but the seaplanes could. They could have much larger, more powerful engines, and because they just needed a large stretch of water, uh, even though they were encumbered by having the floats, they were able to set records. Don't have any of those. <laughs> I wish we had some of those. Those were fun planes. Even freeware, I don't think I've seen one. Oh, the weather over Bordeaux seems a little bit rainy. I mean, in this uh, weather, this looks very legit. It's just the right shading. That is a very selective sort of storm system. Just over Bordeaux. <laughs> I think our first sight is that bridge right there.
That is an interesting bridge. Well, with that bridge over there, uh, this bridge could do some work here. Uh, uh, this part, the span looks fine, it's just, well, over on this side it doesn't look great. We've got cranes over here. I don't know what's going on here. Seems like solar panels otherwise, but probably we shouldn't have cranes in the middle. But that's probably an uh, add-on pack. Okay, our other site was that, I think. That's a stadium. But, unfortunately, the weather's not great. Still, we, we, we've got a good look at it, I think. Okay, on our way back to the airport, but there is a site that I've got plotted before we land. The way the horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizers are just a curved single piece is sort of interesting. As opposed to them being distinct surfaces. Not sure whether that's beneficial or not, to be honest. Okay, we are back close to that interesting sandy formation that we saw earlier. That there is another site close by and I suspect that might be a lighthouse but I'm not sure it's just in a location that a lighthouse might be in but uh, we'll see we'll see what it looks like I've been consistently between 150 and 160 knots during the flight I'm not at full power here both the RPM and the throttle are a little bit back Okay, what do we have here? Oh, there it is. It was Lighthouse. It took a while to pop up though. An interesting place for a Lighthouse. I guess it's playing the difference between this side and the coast. But yeah, definitely a Lighthouse there. And we turn left towards the south to our landing site. It's definitely nice looking at the engines like this. Now, can I land this huge thing within the lake? <laughs> uh, it's not so obvious that that's going to be easy. Water does tend to slow things down pretty forcefully. I'm guessing that this probably has quite a lot of momentum, so I'll, I'll start slowing down even right now. It does have a radar altimeter, I think. I think that's what that one is in meters. Okay, I'm gonna get the flaps down. And when the flaps go down, the ballonets automatically go down, it looks like. So they are sort of coupled. When you raise them, you raise them one at a time, though. And there's a balanets indicator or float indicator here. So bass means that it's down and and then it's intermediate and then retracted. On the ground altitude indicator here, there is a very prominent red line at 60 meters, and I sort of think of that as the you had better be landing line. Okay, last look outside before I set it down. One hundred and eleven knots right now. And we are now below the must land line. That's <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the must land line. Okay, it doesn't like being less than a hundred knots, I'll tell you that right now. We're at ninety five right now. Okay, waiting for contact here.
Okay. How long is this going to take to slow down? I do not know. We're at 70... 50... 30... And 10 knots. Alright. Pretty good. Map wise, we are in the middle of the lake. So, maybe enough room to take off again like this. Maybe not. But let's see about the anchor, I suppose. Maybe I should turn the engines off before having the anchor out. Let's see, though. Anchor buoys. Uh, There's also a dock. I wonder what that is. Let's see. Um, maybe I need to have it shut off for those to work. Let me try auto shut down, just out of curiosity. Okay. Okay, engine covers. Now, will it show other things? Oh, there we go, there we go. With the engines off, we have the dock. Uh, I don't know where the anchor buoys are. But we've got the engine covers and everything. So yeah, lots of features for this, uh, given its price, of course, as we've gotten from these local legends and similar releases that are in cooperation with Asobo. And this was by Blue Mesh, uh, which also, I believe, developed the Cauldron Rafale, which I enjoy flying. Anyway, so there you have it, the Latte Coer. A 631 and with that I'll say thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time